questions around benchmarks on analytics is quite common with our user base and that's more often than not because we've got so many benchmarks to choose from there's all told probably well over 20,000 you've got various market indices you've got various market sectors as well but a lot of people use a sector composite uh, that analytics can build for you and you do that via a portfolio and uh, a quick summary of what a sector composite is is if I've got a portfolio of five funds and each fund is part of a different sector the benchmark I'd want to compare that against would be a composite of those five sectors each given the same percentage weighting as my fund holds within that portfolio and to build a sector composite is actually quite easy as I said analytics can build one for you with within seconds but first of all I've got to find a portfolio or build one and in this example I've already built a portfolio in the system so we're going to skip that bit of building and I'm just simply going to modify and edit it to make sure that analytics creates the sector composite for me so click on the portfolio tab on the left hand side go and find the portfolio you want to create a sector composite for and start by hitting edit once the portfolio loads up you'll see on the right hand side there are 11 funds within my portfolio and at the very bottom there it tells me what benchmark is currently assigned to that portfolio and you'll notice when you create reports in analytics long scan short scans custom portfolios the default benchmark of that portfolio will usually pull through onto the report so it's actually quite a vital tab to make sure that you've got the right benchmark that you want to use down here and the default benchmark is generally the FTSE all share so if you don't touch the benchmark tab when you build a portfolio by default that will be the benchmark assigned to it now if I wanted to change it to something else I can change it to anything I like and I mean anything funds sectors indices even individual fund managers everything on the left hand side not only has an add button allowing me to place that into a portfolio but it also has a little downward arrow as well so if I wanted to make RPI the benchmark if I just simply find retail price index on the left hand side click a little downward arrow add as benchmark and hey presto it changes and I can then click on the little save icon and that now becomes the official benchmark of my portfolio now what if I want to use a, a sector composite well that's what that tick box is there for so if I click on that instead and click on the little save icon that will in a matter of seconds create a composite for me and as I said a few moments ago all it's really doing is looking at every single fund within your portfolio all 11 of them it's looking at the sectors they're part of it's aggregating all of those sector averages together um, appropriating the correct percentage weighting of each and then creating something in analytics now in your account called Keith Baker pension benchmark it's ultimately just simply adding the word benchmark to whatever you've called the portfolio and you'll actually find that new benchmark also back on the main screen so let's go there now so back on the main screen I've obviously got my Keith Baker pension portfolio so I can add that into my active list ready for analysis but equally I've now got as we said earlier a Keith Baker pension benchmark portfolio and let's find it if I just start typing in Keith Baker you'll see in big bold letters benchmark portfolios and it's there Keith Baker pension benchmark so I'll add that in and um, just to show you what the system's done just to be completely clear here if I open up that benchmark portfolio you'll see once inside the portfolio it has simply taken those sector averages of the funds you currently invest into and added the correct percentage weighting next to it and unsurprisingly the benchmark of this portfolio is indeed Keith Baker's pension now again back on the main screen it's entirely up to the user what you do with this data you might just simply want to use that within a lot of the reports you're creating but if you did want to create some one-off charts then so long as you've selected it on the left hand side I can then throw that into something like a performance graph over five years and click on generate and that will show me over the last few years my client's portfolio has actually underperformed its benchmark and therefore had they have invested in the average fund of each sector at the correct percentages they would have done significantly better than what they currently have achieved up until now you could also run a performance versus risk chart so on the right hand side go back to scatter charts um, maybe over a five-year term and click on generate and that will show my client the performance versus risk differences so we know there's quite a big difference in the performance as evidenced by the chart we just looked at and you can you've got the performance axis on the left hand side now my benchmark is higher up so the performance is better as you can see there on there 51 versus 38 percent actually the level of volatility is is relatively similar so for a fairly similar level of risk the benchmark has massively outperformed my client's portfolio 
Now, for those of you that would actually value building your own benchmark, rather than following the logic that we've set, where we're simply creating the sector composite for you, you might prefer to build a composite of indices, or maybe a composite of different sector averages, or indeed maybe a composite of various different indices and sectors. The system's completely flexible. You can do whatever you like. And that's, again, by building a portfolio. So if you click on the Portfolio tab on the left and New Portfolio, so when the Portfolio Builder screen loads up, it's entirely up to the user what they add to the portfolio to mimic the asset allocation you're trying to follow. So on the left-hand side, under Market Indices, as we said earlier, there are many, many indices you could use here. There's no right or wrong. But if I open this up, the, the top range of indices, I've got a lot to choose from. So maybe FTSE 100 for my UK section of my portfolio. Maybe that's at 10%. Um, open it back up. I want a, a global index. Um, probably the most popular one there is the World Index. Maybe I want to add that in at 80%. And just lastly, maybe I want uh, something for cash. And we've got Bank of England base rate. Click on Add and give that a 10% weighting. And now I could save that as my Keith Baker composite index and back on the main screen I will then have that available to start comparing against his portfolio which I believe better uh, resembles his asset allocation and the other good thing about being able to build portfolios in that way and this is certainly true with the sector composite we built a second ago because they're portfolios you can actually levy additional charges onto them as well um, so if you click on portfolio settings because I'm showing uh, an index performance, then there aren't really going to be any charges on here. There are no charges levied onto the indices at the moment. So if I wanted maybe a standard fund charge built in, maybe a standard advice fee, maybe a standard platform fee, I might want that composite index that I've just created to show the performance net of 1.5%. So again, when I compare that against Keith Baker's pension, who is also paying 1.5% in charges, it's a fair comparison between the two, net versus net rather than net versus gross. Now, just to show you a, a completely different application for this, and this kind of segues into another feature of ours called the Dynamic Portfolio Tool, you can actually stitch portfolios together. So whether you're building your own composite or whether you've got analytics to build the composite yourself, you can use something called a Dynamic Portfolio Tool that allows you to put buy and sell dates um, into the portfolio. So with my example here, I've put a buy date of 1995, and I invested 100% into that benchmark portfolio, the composite, and in 2010, I swapped that out and started investing into my Keith Baker pension. Now, what would be the purpose of doing that? Well, it would now mean that my Keith Baker pension, the performance will be able to go back to 1995. So particularly when you've got a portfolio that might be restricted by an age of one of the funds within the portfolio, perhaps you can only go back one and a half, two years performance. If you started to build your own composites or maybe even just stitched in the mixed investment sector, again, there's lots of different ways in which you can do this. But the performance now for my Keith Baker pension will stretch right the way back to 1995. So if I come back to the main screen, I've called this portfolio Keith Baker Historic Portfolio. So click on Add. And again, just to be clear here, there are some funds within Keith Baker's current portfolio that certainly don't go back to February 1995. But that doesn't matter. The way I've created the portfolio, I've ultimately glued them together. So on the right hand side, I can go and create a very long line chart, maybe all the way back to start of data. February 95, and again, click on Generate. And it allows me to educate my client, again, in terms of how these portfolios would have reacted during different market conditions. At the moment, again, my client doesn't invest in funds that go back that far. Most funds in the industry really won't go back much further than 10 years, which is a bit annoying because obviously the last big crashes were far more than 10 years ago now. So by building these composites and stitching them together, you can see where the the join is that little square there so now it allows me to go back and explain to the client look if you were investing in these sorts of solutions and following the same sort of asset classes and taking on the same level of risk historically this is how your portfolio probably would have behaved in 2007 2008 when the markets crashed and again during that long dot-com crash in the early 2000s so i hope you can see there's lots of different applications for sector weighted benchmarks and indeed composite benchmarks that you create yourself and as we always say there's no rule book in analytics there's lots of data on the left hand side you can essentially build whatever you need to show the client whatever it is you're trying to suggest they invest into um, if you do need any help with this um, click on the chat with expert in the bottom right hand corner that will load up live chat facility with a help desk 
And as always, on the left-hand side, you've got a Contact Us tab that will give you the phone number and email address for our help desk and training and guides as well that will give you a direct link to schedule a training session with our training team and take the analytics exam. Um, and guides will give you all of our chart guides, table guides and rapport guides for all the features available in your analytics account.